Starship 24 commands all of its raptors to mush. Starlink continues to swarm the planet. Seafarers are putting the constellation to the test. And we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. Since last week's video, SpaceX crews continue to make adjustments and improvements to Stage 0 at Starbase to prepare for more static testing, culminating in the first orbital Starship launch with a possible booster catch by the tower, but also prepping the vehicles themselves. On Tuesday, the B7.1 test tank was put through another cryo-stress test with the aerodynamic pressure simulator. No obvious issues were apparent, but that didn't stop SpaceX's robo-pooch from going for a walk during these recent tank tests. And on Thursday, Booster 7's Raptor 2s were once again spin-primed, but this time and for the first time, it appears all 13 center engines participated. That's progress, people. Then, a few hours later, it was Ship 24's time to shine. And it did that, and then some. The Paz Deluge system kicked in just prior to the light-up of all six Raptor 2 engines. This eight second burn created a brush fire, something I don't remember seeing since Starhopper's first flare up. But the good news about wildfires is they create fertile soil. So all SpaceX needs to do is plant some crops and then activate another static fire whenever they want popcorn. The blast once again got the better of the thermal protection team, knocking off a couple dozen tiles. Elon twatting much better to break things on the ground than en route to orbit. On the East Coast, Starship's launch integration and catch tower is just about finished sprouting out of the ground, and SpaceX's new Roberts Road facilities are taking shape. Of course, be sure to support local photographers like Greg Scott, RGV Aerial Photography, Starship Gazer, and Lab Padre. Their links are provided in the description below. In the next few years, Starship HLS is expected to take Americans to the South Pole of the Moon for Artemis III. Well, NASA just tapped Axiom Space to develop the spacesuits and its supporting systems for that mission and beyond through 2034. The base value for this first task order comes in at a price of $228.5 million. Axiom will be required to test the suits in space-like environments, and NASA will have to approve of the results before Artemis III. On Sunday night, a flock of 51 Starlink satellites were launched from Slick 40 on the East Coast to low Earth orbit, marking the 60th overall Starlink mission. This was the seventh flight for the converted Falcon Heavy booster, landing successfully on Just Read the Instructions station in the Atlantic. A TikTok user working on one of SpaceX's support ships shared cell phone footage of a drone ship landing from a prior mission, a sight rarely seen by the rest of us. More Starlink launches are standing by for the weekend. 4-2 with AST Space Mobile's Blue Walker 3 test satellite is slated for a Pad 39A liftoff on Saturday evening, and Starlink 434 will use Slick 40 to head to orbit about 24 hours later. Everything is subject to change, of course. The co-founder of Estonian public transportation Wi-Fi provider, Rebel Roam, told Insider that his basic Starlink terminal, using Starlink's RV package, was, quote, surprisingly good. But here's the thing, he was using it on a boat. Quote, there were some outages and sometimes we had to manually reboot it, but basically it worked almost all the time. Tarvo Topolev used the land-based equipment at sea while sailing around Greek islands. The RV package he's using comes in at $600 a month, while the new maritime package, meant for boats, will cost you five grand. Insider then did a follow-up story on an Instagram famous 30 million super yacht named Loon that has been using the maritime service for its passengers in the Bahamas and Caribbean since July. Captain Clark told Insider that they're now paying half the price of their previous internet service for more than double the speeds. In other related news, SpaceX just signed an agreement to launch five low Earth orbit constellation missions for Cetus Space. Their Lizzie Sat Sats fly custom payloads tailored to maximize customer return on investment. The spacecraft are currently in advanced stages of development. This episode of SpaceX in the News is sponsored by The Epic Times. You like SpaceX, that's why you're here. But do you also like learning about other science things? Or what's going on in business? Or how about new food recipes? Of course you do. You have an inquisitive mind and a taste for the better things in life. Which is also why you like award-winning documentaries too, am I right? Well, The Epic Times will provide all that and drop a ton more knowledge on you through truthful, factual journalism. Stream original Epic TV programs on all your devices and do it for just $1. That's right, I'm hooking you up with a two for one, a two month subscription to the Epic Times for just a single buck. So give them a try, we think you like it. Just visit the link on screen and also provide it in the description below. EpicTim.es slash space eccentric. But now it's time for today's honorable mention. The first Martian Chapa, Ingenuity, 
completed its 31st flight over the red planet on Tuesday, which was the second mission conducted since its 10-week hibernation period thanks to dust storms. Its previous mission was a small test flight. Originally tasked just to stay alive for 30 days, here she is about a year and a half later, covered in dust and still operating. The little buzzer that could flew to a max tude of 10 meters for this last flight and booked it 97 meters west to play catch up with her rover pal Perseverance near the enchanted lake that looks a little more bewitched than it does charmed. Well, that's all for this one. Thanks for stopping by. Shout out to my supporters on Locals, keeping the dream alive and information flowing for everyone else. Have a nominal weekend. Until next time, Godspeed.